Hey there, so David here, and I'm on this video in order to show you some of the basic, basic technical terms related to setting up a blog. Now, this is something that I know a lot of people get frustrated with because what happens is a lot of people, typically like myself, we, we do this stuff all day, every day, and we end up taking for granted the fact that we know so many of these terms, and then when you're coming in here as a brand new person trying to figure out how to do it, we tend to leave you in the dark. And I know that. We, we sometimes tend to just use these words and you don't understand what they are. Things like the word server and hosting and FTP and maybe PHP and MySQL. And, you know, I'm going to show you what these things are. They're actually really, really simple. And I don't want anybody to get confused when it comes to the idea of setting up your own website with some of the terminology that they're throwing around. Especially when you go to a hosting company website and they're telling you all the specs on their hosting account and you're going cross-side because you don't know what any of it means. Well, well, the good news is you don't really need to know what most of it means. Uh, so let me let me just show you uh, the basic basic uh, concepts. First of all, I want to tell you what a server is in case you don't know. Um, basically, you understand that you have your own computer, right? And you got a little drive on it, maybe a little light. You know, it's this is your computer. I'll just say your PC, or maybe you use a Mac like I do. Um, over here is another computer and we're going to call this a server that's all a server is is basically another computer now the big difference is that it's going through the cloud here this is the internet so you're out there on a web browser and uh, it, you know whatever web browser you're using whether it be chrome or internet explorer or firefox and you're pulling up all these websites well those websites have to reside on a computer somewhere because they're it's basically files all, all every website on the internet it's essentially just files just like you have on your own computer and, but instead of them being on your computer they're over here on the server now every time that you open up a web browser let's just put a little window here and we'll call this let's say IE since a lot of you guys are probably using Windows it's all it's doing is going out to the web server getting the files and then the server says oh you need these files and it sends them back to you via the web browser and that's how you're able to see the website that's all it is so that's all a server is it's just a, simply a computer that happens to be out there on the internet now the next one is hosting now a lot of you guys may know what this is but essentially all that is is the server that we had over here that's all it is. You're renting space on this computer, usually on a monthly basis, in order to put your website. That's it. You're renting space. Now, there's a couple different kinds of, 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 of hosting accounts out there. Uh, the one that you're probably going to end up with, and I'll, ch I'll show you guys this in another video, but it's called shared hosting. You got shared, and then the other kind is called dedicated. Now this is real, real simple. All shared means is that you have one server. You got this computer out there that's, that's set up as a server, and you've got many different websites all on the same computer. So let's say this one right here is yours. Well, these other ones just belong to other people, and they're all, you guys are all sharing the exact same server. What happens is the, what the hosting company has it set up in such a way to where somebody enters your domain name. Let's say domain dot com it simply pulls up your website now if somebody pulled up another domain of somebody else which is on your server it's gonna pull up their website and it will never affect yours obviously none of these ever affect each other you guys are just using the same server so shared hosting is usually a lot cheaper simply because you guys are all using shared resources now dedicated simply means the entire server is yours that's it. Now, most people, especially if you're just starting out, you do not need a dedicated server because it's just overkill. You really don't need an entire server dedicated just to your website because your, most, pe most websites just don't take that much in the way of resources. So if you're just starting out, I recommend a shared hosting account. If you have a particularly busy site, and you really know that it's going to be being hit by thousands of people every single day right from the get-go, then you might need a dedicated. But most of you watching this video are probably not going to need that. 
Okay, the next concept I want to address is called FTP, because I know a lot of people get confused by this. Um, it's called File Transfer Protocol. You know, basically, you don't need to know even know what that means. All FTP is is a way of, here we go, let me put this back. We got your PC, and you got your server. I like my drawing, it's pretty pretty hot, isn't it? Um, and all FTP is is a way for you to send a file from there to there. And sometimes if you want, you can actually send a file from your server back to your PC. That's all FTP is. It's simply a technology, it's simply a program that you're going to put on your computer to drag files back and forth. That's all that it is. Now I'm going to show you how simple this is. I'm going to actually real quickly pull up my own FTP program right here on my computer and you can see what I mean. So let me pull this up here. Let me move the white thing. All right, cool. So this is really a, just my FTP program. Now this is one that's called Transmit. It's on the Mac. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably using Windows and there's a lot of, lot of them out there. Now there's a really popular free one that's called FileZilla. It's just called File, you can go to Google and search for FileZilla and you'll put a program on here. Now here it is, this is all you're doing is, the, the left side is typically my local computer, this is my hard drive, and the right side is my web server. Now if I drag something back and forth, let's say this little PDF right here, it simply uploads and it's now sitting, you can see it on my web server right now. And if I were to drag a file back over here, it would download it down to my computer. Now obviously this is not an actual web file, so I'm just going to right click and say delete. And that removes it off of my web server. That's it. So all the, this space up here on my web server is nothing but uh, a, a hard drive that's up on the internet. It, that's where my website is, and I move things up there. I can design the website here on my computer and upload it by just simply dragging it over. Um, it's really, really pretty simple. Um, let me do this real quick. Do, 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 do. So again, all we're doing is dragging any file off your hard drive and just simply dragging it over, and that's it. Some programs actually have little arrows in the inside there, so you you say you select what files you want over here on your local computer, and you just hit the little arrow, which which will then tell it to upload it to your server. Same thing when you're downloading it, you would select whatever files you want on this side, and you hit the this little arrow, and it would pr download it back to your computer. So from there, it's actually really really simple. I mean, that's really all FTP is. So all you're really going to do is you're going to get a username and a password to your hosting account from your hosting company and you will plug that into your FTP program and it logs into your server so it pulls up your files up here on the right side and then you just drag things back and forth and that's pretty much all there is to that. Okay, let me clear everything off here. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Okay, let's bring the white back. Okay, the last one, just because I know you guys are going to see this when you're evaluating hosting companies, but I'm going to give you a solid recommendation here in a minute. Um, it, it's, it's the words PHP and MySQL. All right, so I don't want anybody to get confused by this. This is nothing but the programming language that you're going to need your server to support in order to run things like WordPress, which we'll be talking about in another video. That's all it is. It's really, really easy. Just make sure that your hosting company can do PHP and that's all you need to know. This one is basically the database. Now the database, all the have you ever used Excel or any other spreadsheet program? That's pretty much all a database is. It holds data. That's why it's called a database. Now, all your posts and your pages and all the stuff that you're going to be working with inside of a blog, it's all stored inside of this database, but the actual software is programmed in PHP. Now, here's the thing. You don't need to know any of this, really. All you need to do is make sure that your server supports these two things, and you're good to go. You never have to think about it ever again. The good news is that almost all hosting companies do support these things because they're very, very, very popular. Um, and not only that, uh, they'll maintain it. Uh, it. You really don't have to think about it. 
at all. So that's all you need to know. PHP MySQL, that's what they are. Just make sure that your web host supports them and that's all you need to do. And the good news is that pretty much every web host you ever look at is going to support these two things. And if you go with the solution that I'm going to recommend to you in another video, then obviously it's going to support these two things. And not only that, it's going to make the rest of your life a lot easier as well. Okay, so hopefully that helped with the technical aspects here. There really isn't that much to know with regard to the technical stuff. I know a lot of people, they see these words and they end up going cross-eyed on it and they automatically assume that everything is really complicated because they don't know what these words are. But the whole problem is just words. The actual, the actual stuff that we're doing is actually really, really simple. So I don't want you to think that it's not.